it's about time now for us to start working on some projects in this course where we can apply what we have learned while working through the tutorials. One important concept we need to understand before we get started is that our worksheets are going to be divided into two different sections. The first section we're going to call the assumptions or data section. This section will include the variables that are subject to change in this project. The number might be a certain value this month, it might be a different value next month. Any variable that's subject to change is going to go in our assumptions or data section. In our calculation or answer section, we're going to put, well, the answers, just as it says. So here's an example of what a page is going to look like in your worksheet. Let's talk about some key features of this first. First off, any item that is subject to change will go in the assumptions or data section. Any piece of data that may be different next month than it is today is going to go into the assumptions or our data section. Our idea is that if that data changes, the only place we will ever have to change it is in the assumptions or data section. In the answer section, we will never type in numbers. Instead, anytime we want to be using a number, well, that number should already be up there in the data section, and we will instead use a cell reference to refer to that appropriate cell in the assumption or data section. So we do not want to type any numbers at all into our answer section. We will have formulas instead, only formulas, and even as a part of a formula, we can't type a number in. Instead, we will refer to the appropriate cells in the assumption or data section. If we were to type numbers into the answer section and our data were to change, well, then the answer section wouldn't change if we had just typed numbers into it. Instead, in the answer section, everything is going to be based upon cell references that refer to items in the data section. This way, if the data changes, because everything in the answer section is a formula, the results will automatically change in the answer section then. The only exception to this will be very rare, and that is a number that is never, ever, ever going to change. So, for example, if you were writing a formula to calculate monthly interest, well, monthly interest is always going to be the annual interest divided by 12. It's divided by 12 because there are 12 months in a year. And that's a variable that's never, ever, ever going to change. So into that formula, you could type in the 12 because that 12 is not a piece of data that's subject to change. It is a piece of information that is never going to change. So the only numbers you can type into your formula into the answer section are numbers that are never going to change. When a piece of data changes, you should change it in the assumption or data section. You should not have to change anything else in your workbook. If your workbook is properly designed, when you change the information in the data section, your answer section is automatically going to recompute because it includes only formulas that refer back to cell references that are in the data section. So if you change a piece of data in the data section, that should be all it takes to make everything else recompute correctly. If that doesn't work, then something is incorrect. In the data section, we're never going to have formulas. If you find yourself writing a formula, then that's something that belongs in the answer section, not in the data section. On most of our workbooks, we're going to have the data section at the top of the workbook. You'll see there's already that divided line in the workbook that I sent to you. And then we'll have our calculation or answer section down below. And sometimes that just isn't the most practical way to do it. And you'll see on some of our other projects, I'll tell you instead that perhaps a certain number of columns are going to serve as our data section instead. If that's the case and we can't clearly divide the two sections with some sort of a dividing line or such, instead we would want to color the data cells a certain color. The idea being that way someone who uses our workbook can look at those cells that are colored a particular color and know I can change what's in those cells. If they look at another cell that is not colored, then that's a formula and they should not change anything in that cell. As an example, let's create a worksheet that will calculate the yearly payment on a loan. The primary variables that determine the amount of our yearly loan payment are going to be the amount that we borrow, the principal, the annual interest rate, and how many years we borrow the money for. You'll see that I have all three of these entered as items in my assumptions or my data section. Now down below in the calculation or answer section, we want to insert a function that will calculate my yearly payment. 
you recall we can click here on FX and we can tell it to look for the PMT function. We'll tell it OK. Now, let me show you the wrong way to do it. For the rate, you see in our example the rate is 7%, so I could type in 0 0.07. The N per is the number of periods. I could type in 30. The PV, I could type in at minus. Remember that for odd reasons, the PMT function automatically gives you a negative number. Probably the easiest way to make that be a positive number is to put a minus sign in front of the present value. So I will put in minus 100,000. And it tells me that the annual payment, if you borrow $100,000 at 7% interest for 30 years, your annual payment will be $8,058.64. At least an initial outward appearance, it appears fine. But now let me go back and change something. I'm going to change the amount that we borrowed. And I'm going to make it a huge number here, $99 million. Notice below in my answer section, my payment has not changed at all. Why is that? Because I typed in the amount for the principal, the interest rate, and the number of years. Therefore, it's not looking at what's up here in the data section. Instead, it is automatically going to be basing this on 7% interest, 30 years, and then the $100,000 principal. How can we do it instead? Well, let's go back to FX. Instead of typing in the 7%, we're going to click on the cell that contains the 7%. Instead of typing 30 for the number of periods, we're going to click on the cell that contains the number of years. And instead of typing in 100,000, we're going to click again on the cell that contains the present value. Let's tell it OK. Now we get a really big number. All right. Let's get back and change things back to 100,000. And we come back to our $8,058 payment. Let's change the interest rate and make it 2%. And you see my payment has gone down pretty significantly to 44.64. When something changes in the assumption section, it is now automatically going to change in the calculations or answer section. The reason that is happening is because we have only formulas in the calculation section. And those formulas don't have any numbers typed into them they are based exclusively on cell references. They are referring to cell B4, B5, and B3 from my assumption or data section. So when these cells change, the remainder of my workbook will automatically recompute also. Keep this in mind when you prepare your projects. Again, if something is subject to change, we're going to put it in the assumption section. Your answer section will be where you calculate all of your answers. Don't type any numbers into those formulas unless it is a very odd situation where it's a number that's never, ever going to change. If it's something which is subject to change, don't type it in. Instead, refer to a cell reference in the data section instead.